When the news came through that the World Rowing Championships were to be held in Lake Karapiro in 2010, the museum was keen to do an exhibition that reflected some of the interest around the lake. Now we know Lake Karapiro is a renowned venue for rowing, but there are other communities that um, are very interested in this stretch of water as well. It has an amazing history in terms of the hydroelectric production on, along the Waikato River. Let me just show you this map. We are on my left, we have the Karapiro Dam where it is today, very close to Cambridge. From that point we can trace the path of the Waikato River as it goes across in front of Lake of in front of Mangatotari Mountain. It then does a turn and heads south from there towards Lake Topo, which is its source. Now, even though we're looking south, the river is flowing north. At present, there's a power station at Karapiro Dam, but it hasn't always been that way. In 1910, there was a smaller power station built further up the river, all the way down here, which was Horahora Power Station. It was built to provide power to the Waihi Mining Company, and it was later sold to the government, who used it to establish power and electricity production for the central Waikato. When it became clear that that would no longer serve people's needs, the Karapiro Dam was planned and a much bigger power station. The consequence of building the Karapiro power station was that the river behind it would become very swollen and a lot of our history would be submerged. The workers' huts behind the uh, building site at Karapiro were submerged and the power station down at Horahora that had been of such good service for so many years was also um, submerged under the swollen river. This exhibition is about the history of those days. It's about the stories of building the power station at Horahora and it's about the story of building Kapapiro. We have some wonderful historical fo historic photos from Mighty River Power that have been made available to us. And as well, people who lived along the banks of the river in those years have provided photographs from their, um, their records and the stories that go with them. We're going to look at more de in more detail at some of those photographs and the stories that describe that history. The exhibition begins at Aniwaniwa Rapids on the Waikato River where the Horahora power station was later built. This was a sacred site to the Māori who lived in the area and it was a rapid that rivaled Hooker Falls as it is today. Water pelted through in a narrow chasm between the rocks. The loss of the Aniwaniwa Rapids once the power station was built is still felt by the iwi today. Here's a photograph of the power station at Horahora as it was after it was finished. On the right you can see the remains of the bed of the Aniwaniwa Rapids and on the left is the artificial channel that was dug for the power station. As that channel was dug the fill was tipped over into the original channel of the rapids and made it very shallow, a shadow of its former self. The technology that was in place when the hot hotter power station was built is quite surprising. In this close-up of the turbines being prepared for installation, you can see the block and tackle that was used to support these massive um, pieces of engineering. In another photograph we can see ladders and 
barrels used to prop up heavy equipment in a way that would shock an engineer today. Fifty years later, when Karapiro power station was being made, the technology was quite different, although the basic method of building a scaffold and filling it with concrete was very similar. Here we see a three-dimensional web of scaffolding with men hanging in it like spiders on a web with funnels pouring concrete down from the concrete station up at the top of the dam. The massive scale of the construction can be seen in this image of the spiral turbine that sits in the Karapiro power station. There were six turbines in the um, original Horohoro power station. There are three in the Karapiro station that produce almost ten times the amount of electricity. These photographs show the level of the lake before and after the flooding that happened in 1947 when the power station was brought online. These photographs show the Karapiro Dam and power station before and after it became fully operational. The workers' camps that were occupied for six years by those who built the station were at this stage submerged along with the shingle pits and many of the local roadways. A new roadway was then constructed across the top of the dam to provide access to the other side of the Waikato River. We hope that you'll come and enjoy the exhibition in person along with the video that brings that history to life. Thank you.